in you alone. Moses at the burning bush had to decide what he believed about God and if he would trust God alone. Each of you, many of you already have, but all of us sometime in the future will have that burning bush moment, that crisis of belief where you have to decide, will I trust in God alone? Joshua chapter 24 is our text today, if you'd like to turn. As we continue, the seven realities of experiencing God. And reality number one, God is always at work. Reality number two, God pursues a love relationship with you. That is real and intimate. Reality number three, God invites you to join Him where He's already working. And reality number four, God speaks to his people. And God speaking to his people is that invitation for us to join him where he's already at work. And this is the turning point for every believer as you try to determine what do you believe about God. And if you had to explain that to a a neighbor, a co-worker, maybe even a loved one, if you had to explain to someone that knows you, this is what I believe about God, what would you say? Well, some would say, well, I believe He's Lord. I believe He's Savior. I believe He's the great I Am. I believe He's holy. I believe He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I believe He is the Creator of all things. I believe He is a Heavenly Father. And all of that is true. And yet, all of that is simply head knowledge. Even a lost person could determine those things by just simply reading the Bible. What you believe about God is determined by whether or not you are willing, Terry just sang it, to trust God alone. So today, reality number five, God's invitation will always lead you to a crisis of belief. What do I really believe about God? Do I really trust God. Now, what does all this mean? What does it look like? Let's begin with the teenagers. The high school grad, it means that all you have ever been taught at home and at church about God is about to be tested as you now move into adulthood. College grads, it means that as you become a working and contributing member of society, you must now decide if that has been poured into you, that what has been poured into you spiritually, you've got to determine, is it real? Is it worthwhile? Unfortunately, so many of our college students, that's why I'm so excited, Jace, about your ministry. So many of our college students age. They come out of college and everything they'd ever been taught about God. Every spiritual attribute they'd been embraced with goes away. What about for moms and dads? It means that you must decide what you hear on Sunday is still relevant in your life on Monday. And that it means something to you. And then finally, for the church. Our crisis of belief is that you must finally decide whose side that you're on. God's or the flesh. Do things God's way or your way. Brother Dave, I don't understand. Listen to me. If you're still with me, say amen. Amen. All right, you've been quiet up to this point, all right? Now listen to me. 
all over this nation, all over this state, all over the upstate. Churches are dying. They're drying up. You see church buildings now for sale because the ministries are over. Not all, but many of those situations are the result of the church deciding to trust the flesh instead of trusting God. They came to this crisis of belief. Who will we be as a church? What will we be as a church? What will we be as a family? What will I be as a, as a mom or dad? What will I be as a young adult? And you've got to determine, I believe and I trust in who God is and what His Word says. Any church, listen to me, any church, that follows anything but the Word of God will eventually die. We come to Joshua chapter 24. Earlier in this chapter, Joshua had been reminding the people of God's goodness and how he had delivered them from Israel and he had always been there, provided for their every need. So we come to verse 14, and you know this passage, but let's just work through it together Joshua 24 beginning verse 14 now therefore after he'd already explained to them all that God had done reminding them fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth in other words Joshua wanted the people to understand their responsibility to the God who had spared them provided for them protected them their responsibility was to fear the lord and to serve him and put away the gods with a little g you'll always hear me say that a reminder gods with a, with a little g put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in egypt and serve ye the lord Another reminder of their responsibility as children of God. Serve Him. You're going to serve something. You're going to serve someone. That's a fact. Do you understand? Just because you sit in a worship service today, that does not mean you will be serving God tomorrow so Joshua's reminding them look at God's track record in your life serve him 15 but if it seems evil unto you serve the Lord choose you this day whom you will serve don't sit on the fence. Make a choice. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the blood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, now listen to me. If I was to challenge every man in here today, if I was to challenge every woman in here today concerning your household, can you say what Joshua did? Oh, yes, Brother Dave, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So here's the question. Are you? You make the claim. God's people, and we'll see you in just a moment, they were willing to make the claim. We will serve the Lord. But it didn't happen that way. Verse 16, and the people answered and said, God forbid. Joshua. Man, what are you talking about? God forbid that we should forsake the Lord. And to do so, to serve other gods with a little g. For the Lord our God, He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage. 
and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, in other words, because of all that God has done. See, Joshua had reminded them earlier in the chapter, and now the memories of their fathers, their forefathers, and what God had brought them through was flooding their minds. And they said, therefore, because of all that God has done for our people, we also serve the Lord. For He is our God. And friend, listen to me. Be careful what you claim to commit to God in His presence. God has a long memory, and He doesn't forget the comments. He doesn't forget the commitments. He doesn't commit, I mean, he doesn't forget the promises. Oh yes, Brother Dave, me and my house, <laughs> we're going to serve the Lord. Now, I can't be at church the next three or four weeks because, you know, it's, the lake is full and the sun is shining, but we'll serve the Lord. Uh, I can't get involved in the ministries of our church. I just, don't, I just don't have the time that I would like. But we will serve the Lord. Be careful in the commitment you make. When the Israelites were told blood on the doorposts, that was their crisis of belief. They had to determine, what do we believe about God? And do we trust Him that this will save us? When Abraham laid Isaac on that altar, that was his crisis of belief. Do I really trust God with my son as he raised that night? In the lion's den, Daniel faced his crisis of belief. O oh, king, live forever. Don't worry about me. I'm good down here. In the fiery furnace, the three Hebrew children were faced with their crisis of belief. Did they really Really trust God. When there was a Goliath standing in front of him, David had a crisis of belief. As I face this giant of a man, nine feet tall, what do I believe about God? Do I really trust him? At this point in time, the woman with the issue of blood, if, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Her moment of a crisis of belief. When the angel appeared unto Mary and said, you're going to have a son, she had a crisis of belief. And not just any son. You're going to give birth to the Son of God. And on the Damascus Road, as he was on his way with letters, the Bible tells us, to persecute Christians, the Apostle Paul had his crisis of belief. There will be those moments in your life where you too will have to decide what do I really believe about God? Will I really trust Him? When all your friends are moving in a different direction, when all your friends are moving in one direction and you don't feel comfortable with that direction, is God really 
who you were taught to trust. And in those moments, will you trust him? And will you trust him for strength to stand in the midst of uncertainty? And will you trust him to lead and direct your life? When the mechanic says, it's going to be costly, let's get practical for a moment. It's going to be costly. Your transmission's bad. That's a crisis of belief. Because as a believer, you're, Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen. But I really am trusting you. When your spouse tells you, I don't love you anymore. That's one of the ultimate crises of belief. God, can I trust you to walk through this dark valley with me? When your boss says, you know, there's going to be a cutback. We don't need your position any longer. A crisis of belief. Lord, Not can I, but will I trust you in this dark moment? Or when the doctor says, it doesn't look very promising. Will you trust him? And let me, just a personal, because two or three have asked just recently, and I haven't said anything, but most of you are aware, my sister-in-law, my brother who pastors Mount Airy, my sister-in-law, Lisa, has a cancer. They removed the tumor from her brain, but it's incurable. It will come back. She just finished a multi-week series of both radiation and chemo simultaneously. She was at Duke three weeks ago. By now she's in a regimen of chemo for a week. Then she's off for three weeks for a whole year. She travels back and forth to Duke, Jason, every eight weeks. Jason was such an encouragement to her the Sunday they were here. Thank you. And she and my brother are both facing a crisis of belief. And when I'm where they are, I hope I'll be as strong as they are. My sister-in-law is an amazing woman. She's never missed a beat. And she is fully and completely trusting God. But what about you in your dark moment? You know, as a church, Flat Rock, we stand, what I believe, I don't know if you do, but what I believe, we're standing on the threshold of a great future. We really are. But what we believe about God and our willingness to trust God will determine what that future will look like. You see, God has a track record in all of our lives. What do you mean, Brother Dave? God has proven, just like he did to the Israelites, God has proven that he'll meet your needs. You don't know this, but this young man over here, well, he's not as young as he used to be. I've known Terry since he was 15 years old. I've shared this before, but many of you didn't know this. His mother and my mother worked together years ago. At, anybody here remember S&H Crest? Did they have Cresses down here? They worked together. And I saw this man laying in a hospital bed as a teenager after a car accident, almost unrecognizable. I remember that very well. And not only for him, 
of his mother and his father, crosses a belief, and said, I'll go and heal our son. Yes, God healed him because God had plans for him. And God will meet your needs if you allow him to because God has plans for you. Because he has a track record. How many times in your life has God intervened? How many times in your life has God provided? How many times in your life has God protected? And how many times has God done these things and we were not even aware of it? It's easy, you know, on Sunday to say as the Israelites did. God forbid we should forsake the Lord. We, we will serve the Lord. Man, that's easy to say on Sunday. But what about after a hurricane comes and you're sitting eight or nine days without power? You've lost all your food. Still saying the same thing. Here's an LFL, the only one we've got today. Lesson of life. Any choice you make in life. Are you still with me? Amen. Amen. All right. Man, that was strong. Any choice you make in life that does not include God is a wrong choice. Now, Joy, do you have my picture ready? Just a lighthearted moment. I know the picture is backward. And if that's all you ADD people see, you got problems, all right? The point is, somebody came to a crisis of belief. Am I going to work out, or am I going to have me an Oreo? Well, evidently, they wanted the Oreos. <laughs> Amen? You, you'd make that choice, wouldn't you, Dan? <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Your crisis of belief may not be quite that simple. But here's the question. Do you believe that God is the answer to whatever you're facing right now. You see, your peers, those seated around you, they don't know what you're going through right now. They don't know the trauma. They don't know the challenges. They don't know what your crisis might be. But are you willing to to trust God for the answer to whatever it is. In your crisis, and there's always more than one crisis, in your crisis, do you trust Him? Do you? Or do you wallow in self-pity? Oh, Lord, where are you? Moses came to a burning bush. And that bush spoke to him. It was God speaking. And Moses had to determine, do I believe this is God? And do I believe what God is telling? Now listen to me. If you're facing a crisis right now, you need to come. Find your place on this altar or come and say, Brother David, would you pray with me? And you need to trust God with whatever the challenge might be. Great or small, it really doesn't matter. Great or small, we trust God with all. Can I get an amen? So you need to come and say, Lord, This is my burning bush moment. Maybe a health issue, maybe a financial issue, maybe a work-related issue, maybe a family issue. But whatever it is, 
what you believe about God is going to determine how you deal with that crisis. Father, help us today. Help us understand you are the answer to anything that we face in life. And may we turn to you today to find that answer. And I pray this believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's stand. You be the first to come.